Hello and welcome to the Tezrex YouTube channel. Today we're going to look at how you can troubleshoot WebEx meetings when a remote worker has an issue from home. For example, this could be an audio quality issue, a video quality issue or a screen sharing issue. We're going to show you how you can troubleshoot all the important features that are required for a successful virtual meeting. So to start with, we'll log into the WebEx Control Hub. Once we get to the main dashboard, it's important to get an overview of how the services are running on Cisco's side. You can check if there have been any incidents that have disrupted anything on the back end of the WebEx data centers that may have externally affected our user. On the left, we'll click onto troubleshooting. And in our case, we're going to troubleshoot the WebEx Control Hub feature set. And from this screen, we can see all the status information of every service available within the WebEx Control Hub. We can see that all the data centers are operational, all the different hybrid service features are operational, and so everything looks as it should be. It's important to get an overview to ensure that any feature that we've integrated or configured within the WebEx Cloud are working correctly. At the top here, we can also look at the incident history. This shows any incidents that have happened within the last 90 days. If you need to, you can adjust the date range to fit your needs. In our case, we can see there have been no incidents. Now we can confirm that there hasn't been any external factors that caused an issue for our remote workers. So the next step is to dive into the actual meeting where the problem occurred. In our case, we will access the Customers tab on the left and then access our organization, Tezrex. Click View My Organization. From this screen, we will once again go to the Troubleshooting tab. Now we will enter the Conference ID. You can find a Meetings Conference ID within the Outlook confirmation email or within the Control Hub itself. So we just paste the ID in the box and search. Select the meeting. And the first thing we want to verify is what devices were the participants using to join the meeting and how were they connecting? If we click the details tab, we can find this information out. We can see here what WebEx clients the participants were using from the desktop and mobile standpoint. We can also see what platforms are being used, what operating systems. So it was a Mac, an iPhone, and here we can see Windows. Here we can see what browser was being used. And we can see the hardware they were using. Here shows how the participants actually established to the meeting. Was it Ethernet or was it Wi-Fi, etc. And here is the internal IP address range and the external service provider IP range. And then we can see the location they also joined from. Now we've verified how the users access the meeting, let's look at the features that we utilise. We'll click the audio tab here. And the first thing we want to look at is these panels on the right hand side. We can see how many participants we can see the VoIP was used, video was used, we can see the recording was not used, and we can see the screen share duration in minutes. And at the bottom we can see the legend that maps to this graph here. So we can see for audio, Dylan, the host, had good audio quality for the entire duration of the meeting. We can also see that screen sharing was executed at about 20 to 11. This chart shows that Jack joined the meeting slightly later and had good audio quality throughout the meeting. Jack also joined via his desktop a bit later, halfway through the meeting, and again had good audio quality throughout.
Now let's look at the video by clicking on the video tab. Here we can see Dylan executed video throughout the entire meeting. However, Jack did not execute any video from either device. Now let's look at the screen sharing tab. Here we can see Dylan started sharing at around 20 to 11. And it shows that Jack was not in a position to receive the content from his phone because the gray line means not available. From his desktop, however, he was receiving the content, but had some major connection issues. If you look at the legend, the red line means that the quality was poor. So the content being streamed to him would have likely been of a very low resolution. Except halfway through, you can see that the connection stabilised itself shortly before becoming poor again. It was constantly changing between good and poor throughout the length of the meeting. If we go to the details tab, we can see Jack was connecting through an ethernet cable. Based on all our information, we can conclude that his ethernet connection is not up to scratch. And on this, we can suggest that Jack connects using Wi-Fi from now on, or replace his switch or ethernet cable. The next thing we'll look at is setting up alerts. Let's set up an alert for Jack, so that whenever he has a meeting, he'll get a confirmation alert of how his connection is performing. These can be sent out to Jack, an administrator, or both. So we'll click the troubleshooting tab. Once here, we'll click the alerts tab at the top right. Then add alert. In this case, we'll name the alert Jack Monitor. We'll enable the alert. And in this box, you can enter the email addresses of all the users that you wish to monitor. So we'll enter Jack here as an example. Now, when Jack hosts or joins a meeting, we can monitor his connection status. Or alternatively, you can check this box to monitor all participants. Here, you can change the rules based on latency, jitter or packet loss. For this purpose, we don't need to touch these. The next thing we can do is set a rule on how long an issue needs to happen for before an alert is sent out. Here is where we set the email address for the recipient of the alert. In this case, we'll add both Jack and the administrator's email address. Once those are filled in, we'll click add. Now that's set up, the next time Jack has an issue in a meeting, an alert will be sent out to both him and the administrator detailing what the issue was. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the Tezrex YouTube channel.